for giving us your word. It's such a treasure to us. It's such a, a joy and a privilege to have your word. Thank you that you have given us a sure and certain guide in a confusing world in which we live. You've given us truth, and we thank you, Lord, for your word. And we pray that as we come to your word today that you would open the eyes of our hearts and that you would speak to our lives and build us up, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We began last week uh, looking at the theme of receiving the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, that's something that I'm sure that we all have a great interest in is being empowered by God. We definitely need the power of God. We can't even live the Christian life without the power of God at work within us. It's just something that we are not capable of. But he has given us the Holy Spirit. Aren't you thankful? He hasn't left us to ourselves to try to do it on his behalf. But uh, he has given us his power in the person of the Holy Spirit. And Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, even to the remotest part of the earth. So last week we uh, looked at a, a few of these uh, things regarding uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, and we have to live convinced that the Holy Spirit is all around us. And the Holy Spirit is all around us. Last week I made a comment, a couple people uh, mentioned to me afterwards that it really spoke to their heart. But we live in God like a fish lives in water. We're just not always aware of it, but that is the truth of the matter. We live in God like a fish lives in water, and he is all around us. And when we're convinced of that reality and we're convinced of that truth, it helps us keep both feet on the ground when the storm comes. We're not blown away easily. But we know that God is with us and that uh, he is in charge. So uh, Psalm 139, verse 7, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will lay hold of me. Anybody remember Jonah? Even in the remotest part of the sea, you know, during his prayer, the seaweed was all around my head, but God, I called out to you. I, I laugh when I read that because I could just picture Jonah down there, seaweeds around his head. He's calling out to God. This big fish comes and swallows him, gets him back to where he was always meant to be anyway. But, uh, you know, it's not an amazing thing. We're not alone, and God is always with us, and we need to, to live in that way. We need to cultivate a climate of openness and responsiveness to the Holy Spirit. We need to become more aware that he wants to dialogue with us. He wants to lead us. He, he really does. He wants to empower us to effectively live this life. And if Acts chapter 13, verses 2 and 3, while they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then when they had fasted and prayed, laid their hands on them, they sent them away. But again, they cultivated that climate of allowing the Holy Spirit to speak as they ministered to the Lord. And that's why corporate worship is so important. Because that's the primary way that we minister. Well, I mean, there are other ways. But a primary way that we minister to the Lord is when we just forget about ourselves. We concentrate on him. We worship him from the depths of our hearts. And then we leave with a lot lighter because a lot of the burdens that we carried in have fallen off in the presence of the Lord. But in that climate of, of cultivating that openness and responsiveness to the Lord, actively ministering to the Lord and fast, they were fasting, the Holy Spirit said. And he wants to lead us. And that's such an exciting thing. God wants to give us direction. He, he doesn't want us just to make our best guess at what we should do. He, he wants to, to show us by the power of the Holy Spirit what his will is for our life. How many of you know when we give it our best guess, we often end up in trouble? You ever ended up in trouble giving it your best guess? I sure have. But when the Lord leads and he confirms that it's him, God can confirm things in ways that only he can. 
And that's part of the exciting adventure of following the Lord, is, is watching God confirm his purpose and watching God confirm his will. When I was graduating from Bible college, I had a, just a, one of those confirmations where uh, ministering to the Lord, we were standing in the chapel and, and worshiping. We'd just seen a missionary movie called Peace Child. And so if you've ever seen that movie, man, it's, it's just awesome film. And uh, I remember just standing there. I, I told the Lord going into Bible college, I'll serve you in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and New York. You know, that was my parameters for God. That's the, that's the only three places I'm going to go to serve you, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and New York. So I'm standing there in his presence saying, Lord, where is it on earth? Where on earth do you want me? And just boom, like that, Scotland. Yeah, that wasn't even on my radar. And I went back and I said, Lord, if that's you, you're going to have to confirm it to me in a way that I'll know it's you. And that very night, I was hundreds of miles away from Pittsburgh at the Bible college I attended near Rochester, New York. And no one in Pennsylvania knew anything about this. This was fresh off the press. This had just happened and just taken place. I hadn't made a phone call to anybody. I was wakened from my sleep by one of the dorm guys, and they said, you have a telephone call downstairs. You better go down and take it. I went down. It was my two pastors from Pittsburgh calling me. It was late at night. And they called and they said, Dan, we've been praying for you. God's going to take you outside the United States for a time. We really believe that. And I said, well, if that isn't confirmation, I don't know what is. Lord, there's the little matter of the money. <laughs> I got enough graduation gifts to get me to Scotland with $150 in my pocket for the next year. <laughs> Still alive. Amen. God took care. But he can cultivate, when we cultivate a climate of openness and responsiveness to the Holy Spirit, he has ways of confirming his purposes and confirming his will. And he wants to lead us. Romans 8, 14. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. In other words, when God leads us, we, he brings us to a place of maturity where we're no longer children in Christ. We're no longer babes who just mess up and get forgiven, mess up, get forgiven. But we've got some things going in our life where we're getting established in our Christianity. We're living in some victories. We're not just needing forgiveness. And then we're sons. We're daughters. And, and when we get to that point, there's much more of a likelihood that the Holy Spirit is going to lead us. Because we've matured some. We still have some maturing to do. I still have some maturing to do. Probably some of you still have some maturing to do. But those who are led by the Spirit, they are sons. And so God, he wants to lead us. We need to be uh, receptive. How does God lead us? Sometimes it's just a gentle nudge. Do this. And you can ignore it. You can overrule it. You can ignore it. You can overrule it so easily. But sometimes it's a gentle nudge. Sometimes it's an impression where just something impresses your thoughts and it's God speaking to you. Sometimes it's just, there's a calm knowing. You just know. You just know. It's just calm. And you just know that the Lord is speaking to you. Sometimes it's that still small voice that the Bible talks about. Sometimes it's a, if you're seriously seeking the Lord, you may have a vision that God gives to you. It can always be the Bible that God speaks to you from, and he'll never speak to you something that is contrary to the Bible. It's not God if it's contrary to what the Scripture teaches. And sometimes it's the voice of a friend. Hey, have you considered doing this? Sometimes the Lord speaks and leads in those ways. So there are, are different ways. But God wants us to be receptive daily to the Holy Spirit. He wants us to be receptive on a daily basis. And there's a, a scripture that I, I've loved for decades. I, I really first heard this scripture when I was living in Oregon at, when Charlene and I were, uh, were engaged and we were or getting ready to get married. I was living in a, a dorm of uh, young men from the church there. I, I paid rent and lived in, in this dorm that the church had for young men. And Charlene and I were, uh, were planning to get married. And, and this scripture 
to me, burned in my life back then. And it's from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 and 5. The Lord has given me the tongue of disciples, that I may know how to sustain the weary one with a word. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to listen as a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear, and I was not disobedient, nor did I turn back. And I just love that scripture. You know, that's the kind of, uh, that, that's my goal, is to live on a daily basis in that place where the Lord can awaken my ear to hear something that's going to sustain the weary. How many of you know it gets weary? This is a world in which we get weary. And God wants to use us. He wants to open our ear. He wants to lead us to be able to say a word that's going to sustain the weary morning by morning. And how important is that? You know, sometimes we forget how powerful the things we say really can be when God has directed us to say something to somebody. We forget how life-changing it can be. But it is life-changing. How many of you have just been troubled about something and, and somebody has just come to you and, and, like we said this morning, God's got you. It can be just as simple as that. God's got you. And suddenly, you know, the relief comes. Wow. It's a word that sustains the weary, that reminds us our problem is not bigger than our God. We magnify the problem sometimes. What is it when you magnify? If I was to magnify this remote, I would be looking at it as much bigger than it really is. It's this big. When I magnify it, it's this big. And sometimes we magnify our problems. We really have problems, but we make them look much bigger than they really are. And the scale we have to use to determine how big they really are is to comparing them to our God and how big he is. Now, have you ever come across a problem in your life that is bigger than the God you serve? Of course you have not. I haven't either. But sometimes we think we act like they are, don't we? We act like they are. We get depressed. We get, you know, so low. We get, dis and all of us do at times. But the reality is, this is the very reason God wants to awaken our ear. To give us the tongue of a disciple. To learn how to sustain the weary one with a word. And what a vital thing that is. It's amazing. Sometimes when, when my wife is, is troubled, many, many times when she's troubled, she'll say, Daniel. I know I'm in trouble when I'm called Daniel, you know. <laughs> Daniel, what's God saying to me? Many times, because I say that to her. <laughs> Charlene, what's God saying? <laughs> so she does the same. And almost all the time, and, and I'm not, I mean it when I say it. I really believe it when I'm saying I say, be at peace. And does that sustain you? She's saying yes. You know, just something about step back. God's got you. God's got us. God's got this situation. Step back. Know who you belong to. So, you know, if you approach your week asking God, God, awaken me morning by morning. Open my ear that I might hear a word that's going to sustain the weary one. Give me the tongue of a disciple. Give me the tongue of someone who sits at your feet, a disciple, someone who's learning from you, that I may say something to people that's going to sustain the weary one. Man, wouldn't that make our world better? Wouldn't that make your job better? And the Holy Spirit wants to empower us to live that kind of way. Does that mean there's never serious things you have to discuss? Of course, it doesn't mean that. But it does mean you discuss them on the basis that God's in charge. So the Holy Spirit... He wants us to live in this kind of way, sustaining the weary one with a word. 
He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to listen as a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear, and I was not disobedient. So when you feel God may be saying something to you, check it out. Don't be disobedient. Just act on it. I mean, you don't have to walk up to someone and say, thus says the Lord. You know, you can just tell them whatever it is. Just tell it to them. Whatever it is, just say it. You don't have to make a production out of it. Just tell them. Don't be disobedient. Amen? The Holy Spirit wants to empower us in this kind of way. Acts chapter 10, 38. You know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. You know, one of the signs of being empowered by the Holy Spirit is you're, you're doing good for somebody. You're doing things, constructive things that make people's lives better in some fashion. Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. That, there's two words, two primary words that the Greek language has that the Bible, New Testament was written in that it is good. And the first is sort of noble. Noble. It's a good. It's a noble thing to do. And the other is sort of like just a, a very practical, helpful thing. Jesus healed the sick. How many of you know that's pretty practical and that's pretty helpful? You ever been sick? Uh-huh. Boy, yeah, you know, Jesus heals the sick. That, that is very practical and very helpful. It's also a noble kind of a thing, isn't it? So the Lord wants us to actively be involved, making our Christianity visible in the lives of other people by doing good. And when the Holy Spirit is upon us, we're looking for, for other people's good. We're, it's not just all about us. If in Jackie's life she was primarily concerned about herself, she wouldn't be investing the time and the energy to go to Africa to make other people's lives better. And that's one way that the Lord has given to her. He's giving you different ways. At least I don't think we're all called to go to Africa. <laughs> But he's giving you ways that, that suit you. And take advantage of those ways to make other people's lives good. To, do, to, to let them do better. Yesterday morning, we had our food pantry here. If you've never come and watched, it is amazing what happens down there on Saturday mornings. Over 200 households come to get food. And it is just the most amazingly organized, smoothest running thing you have ever come across. And they are in. There's a joyful atmosphere the entire time. Of course, with Zip at the table making jokes, it could not be anything. It could only be a joyful time. <laughs> And everyone is intent on what they're doing. And I thought of this verse yesterday in watching that Jesus went about doing, doing good. And for over 200 homes in this area, people who need food are getting that every month. And they know they're coming into a church. Isn't that, that, isn't that a wonderful thing? And the evidence of the Holy Spirit is there in lots of ways. So, you know, how are you going to do good? How is the Holy Spirit going to open your ear? Are you willing for the Holy? Do you know the Holy Spirit wants to open your ear morning by morning? He wants to lead you. And isn't that like we talk about the gifts of the Spirit sometimes, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, how important it is uh, to, to say something to people 
in gifts of the Spirit and in other kinds of ways. Just think of that woman uh, in the Bible who was caught in adultery in the very act, and they brought her to Jesus, and they humiliated her. They threw her in front of him, and they said, Lord, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. Moses commands in the law that she be stoned. What do you say? And there's this whole crowd of people standing around watching this. So Jesus says to them, let he who is without sin among you cast the first stone. They were ready. And when he said that, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you could call it a word of wisdom. You could call it a word of knowledge. You could just call it truth. One by one, they went away and only he and the woman were left. And what did he say to her? First of all, before what he said to her, I hope you realize there actually was one among them who was without sin. And he did not want to throw a stone at her. How cool is that? <laughs> but what he said to her was, woman, does no one condemn you? No, Lord. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. What he said to her brought life-changing things to her. I'm, I'm sure that she could only go and sin no more after this. I mean, you know... She was changed. I'm confident in that. She didn't fall back into these things. But she also knew that she was valued and she was loved by the Lord Jesus because he spoke it to her. And there's people that God has put you in their lives and they may, you may be wanting to tell them the very opposite of what God wants you to tell them. You may be wanting to rake them over the coals, break their leg. I mean, you may be wanting, and God's wanting you to say something good to them. Heaping coals of fire upon their head. Make them comfortable. Let the Lord awaken your ear. Don't buy into the combat. But let the Lord give you now, I'm going to close with a scripture here. But let the Lord give you the scripture. Let the Lord open your ear. Let the Lord use you. Ephesians chapter 4. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Malice is the desire to hurt somebody. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ has also forgiven you. And those relationships that you're having a hard time with and those that you are not, be willing for the Lord to open your ear. To give them a word and season that will sustain the weary. And sometimes you need to say the very opposite of the way they're acting. To help redirect them. Because a word spoken from God under the anointing of the Holy Spirit can change a life. God wants to use you. You are the life changers. You are plan A. There is no plan B. So be the best plan A that you can be. Amen. <laughs> You're the only plan. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, oh my. <laughs> You're the only plan. So get it right. And I'm going to ask the team to come. But let the Lord, the Lord has given me the tongue of disciples that I may know how to sustain the weary one with the word. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to listen as a disciple. The Lord God has opened my ear 
and I was not disobedient, nor did I turn back. Let's pray together. I'd just like you to close your eyes and lift your hearts to the Lord. Father, I want to thank you that there's a room full of world changers here right now. I thank you that they are in your purposes and in your plans, world changers too. Hi, this is Pastor Dan Kramer from Zion Christian Church in Pittsburgh. This program will give you a glimpse into the life of an amazing group of people who are seeing God do tremendous things. We trust that you're encouraged by our rich worship service and the ministry of God's Word. We'd love to have you visit with us here some Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We'd love to make you welcome, and I know the Holy Spirit would encourage you. We take time in His presence to enjoy Him. Love to have you do that with us here at Zion Christian Church.